Yeah, you read the title right. Some don't look that suspicious, whereas others obviously know a thing or two about trapping. The Venus Flytrap The flowering plant known as the Venus Flytrap is most famous for its carnivorous diet. Each leaf's end has two lobes hinged together to form the trap. Trichomes, which resemble hairy projections, are found on the inner surfaces of the lobes, and when prey comes into touch with them, they force the lobes to close. Only when the trichomes are touched repeatedly will the trap close, preventing the plant from wasting energy if no prey is present. Although there are other carnivorous plants in the wild, the Venus flytrap is one of the few that actively traps its prey. The plant flourishes in acidic, wet soil that may be deficient in nutrients. The forest area below the canopy, known as the understory, must be open for Venus flytraps to thrive. Natural fires that rage through and bum off sections of trees and bushes are one of the things that maintain the understory open. But since these fires might turn dangerous for people, we frequently put them out before they can do any good for the forest, and the Venus flytrap by extension. Cobra Lily The Cobra Lily is the only species in its genus and is a one-man snake pack. Although it and other Saracenia pitcher plants are closely related, they differ physiologically from one another. In contrast to all other pitcher plants, the cobra's huge, curving head of the pitcher opens downward. This, along with the plant's mouth's pointed and forked leaf, makes it unmistakably resemble the infamous hooded snake from which it gets its name. Its appearance isn't enough to deter insects, though, as the plant is a voracious insect eater. Cobra lilies employ all the same strategies as traditional pitcher plants, but they also have a few extra tricks up their leaves. The forked tongue that dangles from the mouth of the trap secretes intoxicating nectar, with the highest concentration being where the tongue meets the trap's opening. When a bug enters the bulbous hood, it becomes disoriented and unable to find the exit because of the transparent blotches that cover the head of the trap. The worn-out bug stumbles and is then caught after numerous unsuccessful attempts to get away through the false exits. Bladder Warts The bladder wart is a highly developed aquatic carnivorous plant. They photosynthesize and produce blooms, but the similarities between bladder warts and other plants end there. They don't have any stalks, leaves, or roots. Also, did I mention that they catch and digest unaware aquatic and semi-aquatic prey using tiny trap doors attached to digestive enzymes secreting bladders? At their most basic level, these are floating bladder-like trap doors that can reach a maximum size of around a quarter inch. They seek aquatic prey, striking with lightning-fast reflexes in ten thousandths of a second. Prey are lured toward the trap door by the guide hair. Door swings open when the trigger hairs are touched and the prey and surrounding water are immediately sucked into the low-pressure trap. This is fatal for unknowing mosquito larvae, water fleas, tadpoles, or newly hatched fish. Over the next few minutes, the trap expels extra water and uses mucilage to shut itself again. Up to a dozen insects can be caught by one trap before it loses effectiveness, and the trap is once more ready to catch other prey in as little as 20 minutes. Sundew with approximately 200 different sundew species and hybrids found worldwide, the Drosera genus is the most varied of all carnivores and is truly a global plant. They all have intriguing appearances, delicate blooms, predatory lifestyles, and sparkling dewdrops. All sundews use the shimmering dewdrips to catch prey. The leaves of different species differ in size, shape, color, and motion, but they're always densely covered in tiny hairs that resemble tentacles and have small drops of dew at their tips. The sundew is stunningly beautiful due to its profusion of dew traps, but it also acts as a sticky death trap for little insects. The so-called dew is sweet-smelling, gooey drips of mucilage that the plant secretes to entice its prey. The bug lands on the plant, believing it has discovered a tasty meal, but it gets caught in the ooze and turns into food for itself instead. Some species will even completely fold over to increase the surface area that makes contact with the prey. By doing this, the amount of nutrients the plant can absorb is maximized. Biblis. The rainbow plant is a lovely and delicate carnivorous plant with elegant flowers and shimmering leaves that catch the light. They're not to be confused with sundews as they're a distinct species more closely related to butterworts. They also have similar digestive glands and flower structures to butterworts. They have branching, narrow stems with linear leaves protruding from them. Flowers are scattered among these carnivorous tentacles, implying that the Biblis doesn't mind eating its pollinators as well. Ever wonder why the Biblis is called the rainbow plant? Well, they have seven documented species, one for each color of the rainbow, actually. The leaves have two types of glands, one that secretes a shimmering glue that attracts and entraps insects, and one that does not. Mosquitoes and gnats have no chance. They land on a droplet expecting a tasty snack, but instead become entangled. 
they come into contact with more glue as they struggle and eventually die from exhaustion or suffocation. The second digestive glands scattered along the leaf surface then enter the picture. The digestive enzymes dissolve the insect's soft tissues as they do in most carnivorous plants. Waterwheel Plant The waterwheel power plant in both spirit and genetics is an aquatic Venus flytrap. They have similar trapping mechanisms, albeit on a smaller scale and in water. Water wheels feed on small prey, such as eelworms and daphnia, that enter their traps and come into contact with trigger hairs. Like a few other carnivorous plants, the water wheel plant is the only plant in its genus. Water wheel traps resemble small translucent fly traps at the end of a broad petiole. Hair-like bristles surround the trap, preventing it from colliding with other aquatic plants and becoming damaged or falsely triggered. The trap lobe's outer edges are lined with many hook-like teeth that interlock when the trap closes around the prey. Within the trap, digestive glands secrete acids that break down a prey's soft tissues for absorption. Its traps use a combo of interlocking teeth and mucus sealant to seal around unfortunate prey. At this point, the trap expels a large amount of water and replaces it with digestive juices. Each plant can catch two to four meals before giving up. There's no known lure to attract insects at the traps. Cephalotus follicularis. This is the pitcher plant's small cousin. Like the cobra lily, it's the only species in its genus, but it has several cultivars with different trap sizes and colors. The plant resembles a miniaturized, fuzzy wrinkle nephenthus with bright red, greens, whites, and purples. Due to its attractive appearance, it's very desirable among carnivorous plant collectors. Pictures of an Australian pitcher plant are fuzzy little traps that grow at the tips of petioles. These petioles grow in a rosette pattern from the plant's center. Pitchers typically reach a maximum size of about one to one and a half inches, though some grow as large as three inches. A lid protects the trap from rain and keeps the digestive juices from evaporating. A slippery collar inside the trap secretes nectar to entice insects to spelunk into the pitcher. When an insect dips its head into the trap to feed on the nectar, it will lose its grip and fall to the digestive juices below. The insect then will have difficulty scaling the trap's waxy interior, but even if they do, they can't navigate the overhanging collar. Now it's time for the day's best pick. So far we've talked about plants that can eat insects and other small creatures, but here's one plant in particular that can even digest small monkeys. Tropical Pitcher Plant Nephenthus, or tropical pitcher plant, is a highly complex and refined bug catcher. Leaves sprout from the plant's center and each with a thin tendril at the tip and a pitcher trap at the tip of the tendril. The color, the shape, and the size of the traps at the end of the leaf vary greatly between species. Some of the traps can grow to be quite large. In the wild, for example, the Raja Nephenthus has been known to grow enormous traps capable of catching small mammals, and in very rare cases, small monkeys. The doomed animals are drawn to the plant's sweet-scented nectar. Once they fall in, it's essentially game over. The trap has two zones. The upper zone is waxy and slippery, making it difficult for even the most sure-footed insects to climb out and escape. A lower zone with the thousands of glands exists beneath this. These glands produce digestive enzymes that drown captured prey, dissolve soft tissues, and absorb nutrient slurry. Mind you, that's once the insect becomes soup. As new struggling prey is caught, more enzymes and insect dissolving acids are secreted. Butterworts Butterworts are the insect eating plant equivalent of flypaper gets its name from their broad green leaves which are covered in tiny granular hairs that secrete sticky, greasy mucilage. These mucilage drops cause the leaves to shimmer in the light, attracting hungry insects. Butterworts are a visually appealing, deceptively simple carnivorous plant. The surface of the leaves perform dual functions, trapping and digesting prey via a series of glands and limited movement. Most are light green, but in bright light some turn pink, a color that may help attract prey. A small drop of glue can be found at the end of each of the thousands of translucent hairs that cover each butterwort leaf. These drops glisten in the sunlight, posing as a tasty snack for insects. Bugs that land on the leaf become entangled in the surprisingly grippy mucilage sticky drops. As the insect struggles, it comes into contact with more mucilage, which causes it to become saturated with glue. The lucky ones only lose one or two limbs. The majority become glued to the leaf surface and suffocate. Before we move on, I've got a little challenge for you that'll take five seconds to complete. So here's the deal. You just leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell, and you will get 25 years of amazing luck. Try it, it really works. Dewey Pine What image comes to mind when you hear the name Dewey Pine? 
have a good idea of how it looks if you imagined a small, dew-covered pine tree. The carnivorous leaves of the dewy pine resemble pine needles slathered in tiny drops of sweet-smelling dew. When old carnivorous leaves die, they form a branching stem that resembles the woody stem of a small tree. Its leaves are thin and range in length from 8 to 10 inches. They're lined with red-tinted hair-like glands. This is where the dewy is kept hidden. Each drop of glue catches the light and sparkles like a leaf after a dewy morning. But that's not what entices the insects. It's the sweet honey scent. When a droplet of dew mucilage comes into contact with an insect, it sticks to it and detaches from the plant. As the insect tries to break free from the glue, it comes into contact with more glands and becomes even more coated. The breathing holes are eventually covered, and the insect suffocates and dies on a leaf. See you all next time!